The finals are proudly brought to you by the Friends of the Sydney International Piano Competition, a passionate membership group of volunteers Australia-wide who donate the first prize of $25,000 and fundraise for the competition. Hello, I'm Chris North, your Master of Ceremonies, and welcome to Day 17, our last day of the 2021 online competition. We wrap up today an incredible three weeks of piano performances, we're now down to our six finalists battling it out to win. Alexander Gadjev from Italy, Slovenia, Shion Otta from Japan, Adam Balak from Hungary, Calvin Abdil from Australia, Indonesia, Artem Yasinski from Ukraine, and Alice Berla from Canada. Our finalists have the opportunity to win some extraordinary prizes, including the Arthur Benjamin Fifth Prize donated by Rosalind Carson valued at $10,000, the Noel Mutant Wood Sixth Prize donated by Ron, Lynn and Marcus Ogden for $7,500. Now, all prizes are named after famous Australian pianists who have made a significant contribution to pianism in Australia. Yesterday, we heard Adam Balak perform and Calvin Abdeel. And today, Artem Yasinski from Ukraine performing an 80-minute recital. Of course, these programs include spoken introductions and two encores. First, though, let's go to Piers Lane. He's interviewing one of our seven jurors, Seta Taniel from Austria. Seta is renowned for championing works of lesser-known composers and is also an active chamber musician. Her artistry and pianism have excited audiences worldwide. So over to you, Piers. Seta Taniel, how lovely to see you over the internet. <laughs> nice to see you too, Piers. I first met you years ago now when I was invited to a house to hear you run through all the Chopin preludes before recording them. And I still remember that indelible impression of your moving musicianship and just stunning command of everything. And um, I can't believe so long has passed in between. It's interesting oh, yeah. that you, 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 you remember all that. <laughs> Absolutely, it was indelible. But you were born in Istanbul of Armenian parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. But tell me a bit about your background. Well, I studied in, in Istanbul and then I moved to Vienna and, and uh, finished my, concluded my studies in Vienna, Hochschule. Were you a teenager when you went there? Did the whole family go? Yes, <laughs> quite young to Vienna, yeah. Continued my studies there, yes. Yeah. Yes, and who was that with? Uh, it was uh, with uh, Dieter Weber and Bruno Seidelhofer. Famous names. And I think it was a pretty golden age at that time in Vienna, wasn't it? Uh, you were yes. not the only talented pianist there. Tell me, who were your colleagues at the time among the students? Uh, Rudolf Buchbinder and um, John O'Connor. Who came later, obviously, a bit later. I was before him uh, there. And... Uh, Marta Argerich was there at one point? She was before. She was uh -huh. before. But she came many times, obviously, for concerts and then when we met again. Yeah. I met her years, years before, before that, actually. And did you take part yourself in international competitions? Yes, I did, yes. I, uh, I was um, a Beethoven, international Beethoven competition and uh, Arthur Rubinstein. Right. I think you were in the very first Rubinstein. Yes, the first, the very first. Yes. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. And the Beethoven competition is a tough one in, in uh, Vienna. All the classics yeah. players. <laughs> How did you go in those? Yeah. Um, OK, I was finalist. Uh, third, uh, third ex echo yeah. in Rubinstein and second in Beethoven. Amazing. And I remember last year when we were chatting and I said to you that I was working on all the Beethoven sonatas that I hadn't learned in the past. You laughed and said, gosh, that takes me back to Vienna because you had to prepare a Beethoven sonata every week or something uh, yeah. in your classes. We had to learn all the Beethoven sonatas. I mean, we don't have, we didn't have to, but uh, we learned all of them. Not performed, obviously. So I wouldn't have performed the uh, 106. Definitely. That's not for me. It's such a big, uh, big uh, piece. 
But uh, yes, yeah. we had to learn them. Nevertheless, I had to learn it, yeah. One of the great things with you is the amount of unusual repertoire that you have brought to, to uh, CDs yeah. and in concert, you know, Shavenka and all sorts of things that people have forgotten about largely. And oh, yeah. Moshkovsky, yeah. wonderful things that you have explored. Yeah. Oh, Moshkovsky, Shavenka and McDowell and Stenhammer. But like you, Piers, you have also done quite a bit of lesser known yeah. composers. Yeah. Or lesser performed pieces, yeah. Yes, and in fact, there's a prize in the Sydney International Piano Competition this time for the playing yeah. of a piece by a composer pre-1950 who has been yes. Yes. unduly neglected. Yeah. yeah, that will be a very difficult task for us. Indeed, indeed. But yeah. I think it's great yeah. to encourage younger pianists to explore yeah, less yeah. familiar territory yeah. because there are so many thousands upon thousands playing the core repertoire, which we all adore. I think uh, it's difficult, isn't it? Because people love to put others in boxes. And I know when I was younger and recording like you for Hyperion Records, rarer repertoire, there were promoters who felt, you know, that I was only interested in playing a Moshkovsky concerto uh, in concert, <laughs> not Beethoven four or five or something, which of course is totally untrue. So it's a difficult balance to achieve always. Yeah, that's true. Tell me, what sort of things were you looking for as a juror this time? Well, uh, I knew that uh, they all had, uh, I mean, I have to say, first of all, it was, we had a very high level of performers in all in their own way. And they all had something to say. I suppose there's a danger that people might think, oh, yes, they've all got fantastic techniques these days, but are they great musicians? Yeah, that's that's what I was my main uh, thought when I was listening to all those videos. But I have to say, uh, under the circumstances, they all did a very good job recording. But obviously, many things could have been different if it was, of course, if we were not in this situation now. So... It was also difficult um, because they were all over the world. They were recording in different halls, different acoustics, different pianos, some pianos better than others and some sound better than others. So we had all these things. So I had to forget all that and really concentrate all, you know, because, you know, we are human beings, we hear our ear hears it, and then you can't just, you know, go from one to the other. So I had to do a lot of breaks in between. So just, just to think, not to compare any sound or any, you know, tone or anything, because we had there were some, um, some pianos there were maybe not adequate as well. So it, uh, you know, we had some muffled sounds, and we have we had some shrill sounds, <laughs> and. We had some, uh, you know, very loud pianos and, uh, you know, all this was a bit disturbing. But what I was looking at was that, first of all, uh, they stay true to the composer, whatever they play. So when they play Bach, Beethoven or, you know, Mozart, whatever. So they don't uh, just uh, add uh, too much of, you know too many changes. So we still have to be true to the composer's wishes. Secondly, that the technique doesn't uh, really is upfront leading as if they want to show us how good they can play the piano. It should, the music should be in the forefront. For me, that is always very important. And the technique then will just, uh, obviously they have to be able to master the pieces they are playing. I'm not saying technique is not important. But music should come first, the continuity, the big phrases and the pace and the breathing and uh, in early music or, or formal structure and um, or the developing uh, as the composer's wishes. And then while doing this wonderful music, then the technique will then just suddenly, with nonchalant expertise, I would say, would come into, into the performance. So that was my main, uh, 
main uh, thought when I was yeah. listening. And and I have to say that we had some wonderful performers at the beginning in the preliminary. Unfortunately, we don't have so many, you know, spaces. So we had to choose, and there was they were chosen only twelve to come to the semi-finals, but there were really some great talents who didn't make it. And they were really great musicians. And I hope that they will one day, you know, we will hear from them one day again. It's very distressing, isn't it, as a juror, when you can't have everybody through that you want, you know, it's a majority decision. And so inevitably every juror loses one or two or three people that ideally they want through. It's very frustrating. Which is, right. Which is okay, because you see, all performers have, are strong in something else that they are, you know, showing us. And the world is big. There are lots of audiences and they, they all had something that would uh, really please any audience in the world, you know. And we are now like those audiences. We were then just choosing to, to 12 of them. Obviously, we couldn't have all what we wanted, but it was a majority decision, as you said. And, you know, which is a, this is a competition. So this is how it is. Seth Ataniel, thank you so much for those okay. thoughts. And... Uh, well, I, I'm sad that we couldn't have you live in Sydney this time, but maybe another time. Oh, yes, that would be great. Yeah, but I still enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye, Piers. Now time for our finalist, number five, Artem Yasinski from Ukraine, supported by Club 32 donor Lyndall McCormack. Both Artem's parents are musicians. They introduced him to the joy of music at an early age. And his parents would always have friends around at the house and they would be singing and playing. What a place to grow up. Artem teaches piano and chamber music at the Hochschule von Kunst in Bremen and has recorded two CDs, one in 2015, the other in 2018. He's recorded his final program at Fazioli Hall in Sacile. He lives in Germany, but Italy has a special place in his heart. Good luck. Artem. Hello, uh, my name is Artem Mezinski and I'm very, very happy to present uh, today's program. For me, it's a very special program because of all of these pieces that I will play today, it's one, one of my favorite pieces. And um, today we here in Sachili in Italy we have uh, such a rainy weather. Weather it's uh, it's very very cold, and so I decided so we start today's program with a very sunny music, <laughs> uh, music of Joseph Haydn. For me, this music is uh, so special because it's a lot of sun, a lot of light, uh, very lightness and of colors and a lot of humor and I think that this uh, type of humor and it's really unique uh, you can find it maybe maybe only by Haydn and uh, I can imagine how extremely it was in his time but then because even now it sounds so modern and uh, fresh and with a lot of light and humor and yeah and then we're going to the next um, pieces of uh, piece of our program it will be um, variations of uh, karel Szymanowski. he um, wrote this piece when he was very very young and i think he was early 20s and um, but you can hear in this music his um, how genius he was as a composer because uh, even if you can hear some influence of uh, other composers of Polish music or uh, maybe some Russian music, but uh, you, um, you can hear that his style uh, still really unique. And 
it's a big pleasure also to um, find in this uh, because this music starts so dark there's so dark harmonies and so so um, really heavy but suddenly it comes with some dances mazurka or some valsa so very very interesting and for me this music um, is different to Haydn uh, not only uh, of course of the style and sound but the way of thinking because um, it's also for me very different because uh, Haydn is for me like more orchestra or maybe a chamber group uh, I can imagine how the good would be played or uh, maybe some op opera uh, in the second part and by Shimanovsky it's for me more like um, piano music so with uh, typical piano sounds beautiful piano, piano music so uh, Haydn and Szymanowski. <laughs>
the next piece in our program is there are <laughs> there are many beautiful pieces of um, Johann Sebastian Bach and it's called Symphonias. I choose seven of it today for today. And for me, it's a very, very special piece. He, he wrote it like uh, exercises. But for me, what's very interesting, uh, interesting to know is that um, uh, for the first version he wrote, uh, it's like uh, fantasies. And maybe uh, for me, it has, uh, uh, I mean, this idea, or very, <laughs> I, I think it's a very good idea to, to call it maybe let's like, fantasia. Uh, but because um, in this music, every piece it's so different. It's like uh, in every piece, their own space, their own world. And, and I really love to play it today and to present it today um, because and he mentioned in, uh, in pieces that. Um, I don't know, one minute long <laughs> to change uh, so many moods and tell so many expressions, tell so, so many expressions that um, uh, in one minute we can feel like in the same, in, like in the huge piece of uh, other comp uh, com composers. And yeah, so I will play uh, seven uh, symphonias by Johann Sebastian Bach. And then um, I will start with um, totally different music. Uh, uh, it's music that it's very near for me, and um, I will play the eighth sonata of uh, Prokofiev. It's very um, Difficult music, uh, one of the most difficult language also um, that he Prokofiev have used in the his sonata here. But for me, this music also very near because I came from the same re region, and uh, when I was a child, I heard all time like uh, in all concerts uh, Prokofiev music, and I enjoyed it so much, and I have a dream to play this music. And now I'm happy to present it. Uh, and this music, for me, this music is very cinematography uh, because you can, you can um, see um, everything. Not only here, for me, uh, you can see uh, what happens in this music. Um, this music was, as I said, um, was written during the World War II. And of course, the feelings in this music are very deep and very difficult, uh, uh, but uh, sometimes we hear also some hope in the, for example, like in the second movement where, or in, in the third uh, moment. And uh, so I'm very happy to present these programs today. And yeah, Bach and Prokofiev.
Magnificent recital, Artem. Well done. How impressive is it that the dedication from these young pianists, each playing from their own home country and often under lockdown conditions. We've got to remember how much winning this competition and even having the chance to perform means to them and their careers. Many haven't worked or performed publicly for over a year, so your support right now is vital. It's wonderful to be a part of these emerging classical music stars and their future lives to be able to help them bring their dreams to life. Well, that's a wrap on this session and please join us this afternoon at 3pm Australian Eastern Standard Time for our final performance by Alice Berla from Canada. The awards will be announced immediately after, so do not miss the final session and the culmination of the competition. Thank you to everyone who's been involved in the competition broadcast this year and thank you to you, our audiences, for watching. So for now, it's goodbye. Thanks again to our final sponsors, the Friends of the Sydney International Piano Competition, who have tirelessly volunteered and fundraised for the competition since 1977. Membership to the Friends is welcome to all those who share a love and passion for music.